Ladies, gentlemen, honoured guests, I'm delighted to welcome you to the third annual Openness Awards and the 80th Stephen Paget Memorial Lecture, which will be given this evening by Professor Sir Mark Walport. I'm Jeremy Pearson. I'm currently the chair of the UAR's council, and it's a great privilege to see the great resource and energy that's been devoted to ensuring that the Concord Act on Openness is a success. There are now 109 signatories to the Concord Act, and more organisations are still signing up. You have all been given a copy in your <coughs> goodie bag, so please take it away and read it. Uh, and it shows just how much work has been done, and it's filled with good practice that supports transparency around the use of animals in research. And we're very grateful to the Medical Research Council who absorbed the costs of printing the report for us. We only need to think back about five years to see how far we've come. At that time, website statements in support of animal research were bland and well hidden. Few organisations and only a handful of individuals spoke regularly about how animals were used in research. <coughs> and although scientists were no longer threatened by activists, the idea that keeping quiet about work respected a duty of care to both the sector and those who worked within it had been very difficult to shake off. This report focuses on some of the barriers to the Concordat and shows that fears of activism and openness carries risk are still of great concern to the scientists, technicians and those responsible for governance in the sector. However, every year we do see greater evidence that openness works. It's never been easier for interested members of the public to find out how their local universities use animals in science. We now advertise jobs openly and more widely ensuring we bring the best people into our sector and communications teams have been able to see inside animal facilities so they have first-hand knowledge when they communicate about them. This year staff from both learned societies and funders without animal facilities of their own have had the opportunity to visit research organisations and see animals for themselves and increasing numbers of institutions have opened their doors to students and engaged them in ethical discussions about animal research. This change has been enormous, and we should all be proud of the work done to make our sector more visible. Not everyone will agree with the research that is carried out, and some of the communications work is still challenging. One of the most difficult asks of the Concordat is that signatories are mindful to communicate the harms and limitations of research as well as the benefits, so that they reflect the experience of the animals and allow people to make truly reflective judgments about research. And that must be balanced with the organisation's need to champion their research, and that's a complex message to say. <coughs> we believe that shining a light on research practice and making animal research more visible actually leads to improved welfare, as we all want to be known for excellent practices in research, as well as reducing the need for activists to expose us. So tonight's awards represent excellent practice in communications around the use of animals in research. And the winners are those that are pushing the boundaries of openness and leading by example. I'd like to thank all the sponsors for their support this evening and thank the judging committee for their time and thoughtful deliberations. And they ensure that the awards encompass many facets of openness and meet the aims of the Concordat. So with that introduction, it's time for our first award, which will be presented by Dame Bridget Ogilvie. Bridget is a parasitologist and an immunologist who I'm sure is known to many of you. In addition to her research on immune responses in parasitic worms, she's well known for promoting public engagement with science, and she's a past and current board member of many of the organisations rep represented here tonight. Please join me in welcoming Dame Bridget Ogilvie. Thank you very much, Chairman. It's a great pleasure to be here as I, in my research days with the Medical Research Council, I used very large numbers of animals. And so was, I'm very well aware of what a crucial issue this is. And it's so delightful to see how this, the, the openness with which people are now beginning to uh, behave in this sector. <coughs> now my uh, task is to give the award for internal or sector engagement. Now we've got, had many entries in this category, which included two individuals as well as institutions. And I'm, I must apologize because we actually made a mistake in this call in, in including both individuals and uh, 
institutions because it became an impossible task to compare the work of an individual with that of an institution. So we hope that, um, uh, I give my apologies to two individuals who were th well thought of, Kelvin Elderkin from Sequani and Ryan Cheney at Imperial College London. And we hope that the host institutions of these two people, Sequani and Imperial College, will support a new Concordat initiative to recognise Open as champions through an internal awards and recognition process. These awards will highlight the efforts of those who have worked so hard to shape the changes that we celebrate tonight. And from next year, champions recognised through these institutional processes will be eligible for nomination to an Openness Award in the Outstanding Individual category. Now, there'll be more information on how to develop awards for Openness within your organisation will be provided in early 2017. And the committee would like to see the impressive achievements of both Calvin Elderkin and Ryan Cheney nominated in the individual category next year. Apologise again to those two individuals. So for the winner, now among many nominations, one stood out as providing a new way of working that's clear and transparent, as well as being for the whole research sector. The judges felt that it was open about the need for improved training among our animal care staff, who was so important in my days as a research worker. I just remember what a difference it made when you had a well-trained um, animal uh, technician who clearly loved animals uh, looking after them. And the, 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 <coughs> the, the need to raise standards for these people is very important. It, it provides empowerment to a key profession for all of us who've worked with research, on research with animals and who provide our facilities with animal care and welfare. And so the award winner in this category is the Institute of Animal Technology Careers Pathway. So the next award will be presented by Professor Chris Higgins, who has impressive credentials as a biochemist and a molecular biologist, and known to us all as the former Vice-Chancellor at Durham University, where he was a great champion of openness around animal research. He was also the 2007 Paget Lecturer, and we're very pleased he can be here tonight. Please welcome Chris Higgins. Thank you. I'm also extremely pleased to be here tonight and lend my support to everything um, that is going on. Um, things have moved forward so far in the 10 years or so since I was involved in um, engagement animal research. It's wonderful to see, and congratulations to all of you. Um, it's my pleasure to present the Public Engagement Award, um, and actually there's a highly commended and a winner in this category. First, the highly commended, um, this institution has taken enormous steps towards openness and has really embraced change. And I can actually vouch for that personally because I was at this institution a number of years ago and it wasn't perhaps as open as it might have been. It now has done a phenomenal job in becoming open on the animal research um, that it does. Um, in particular, they had a social media engagement um, which reached a great audience around the country and actually internationally and was accessible to many who had no involvement with animal research at all, pretty much for the first time. Um, they had a, a great video and proactive approach, which was truly leading. I have to say, I was at this institution, but I had nothing to do whatsoever with the selection of the awards. Um, but the runner-up here is Imperial <coughs> College. I used to work with Nandy at Imperial College, <laughs> <laughs> but I had nothing to do with the award. So. Could you have a 
you hold the, can you see the picture? That would be lovely, thank you. Thank you very much. Well done. And the winner, um, and the judges have written, this initiative engaged a wide range of audiences, providing them with ways of engaging with a complex issue. The event was hands-on and innovative, and the committee appreciated that it was a public event without a pre-arranged audience, and of course, therefore, the risks were extremely high. Um, but this was clearly the first time that animal research had been approached as a topic in a particular venue that they used and that a truly lay and important lay audience was reached. And the award winner is Cancer Research UK Manchester Institute Museum. presented by Karen Gardner, BBC journalist and well-known within the animal science community. Karen has championed openness for many years, having been a victim herself of animal rights extremism during her time with public relations at GSK. She's now a breakfast reporter for BBC Wiltshire. Please welcome Karen Gardner. Goodness, I've shared uh, microphones in recent months with David Cameron, Mary Berry, and St. Alan of Titchmarsh, but I've never shared it with such august company. I should really have been the warm up act. When they asked me for net, the letters after my name, the best I could come up was TWM, Tired Working Mother. Um, I, when I last counted, had been spending 25 years, I guess talking about the importance of openness in animal research. We've come a long way. We've replaced security fences with tours of labs, anonymity with, and silence with the Concordat. But challenges remain. I'm looking particularly perhaps at the university sector, although, of course, the, ones, the universities that should be here aren't here. But we're working on that. I know Wendy is very hard. Um, but let's celebrate the good and the brave. And uh, this is the award for media engagement or media stories. And there were two notable stories about animal research this year, but the judges felt the one, that one in particular really stood out. The organisation that wins, um, it does win a lot of awards for openness, but every year it manages to push new boundaries. Several organisations volunteered to host journalist Cherry Wilson when she wanted to cover animal research for The Sun. Cherry is not a friendly science correspondent with a PhD, and the volunteers took a bold step in inviting her. She chose to look at a study on obesity for her piece, and the judges were impressed by the engagement of Sun Readers, a hard-to-reach target audience for animal research, and by the professional and capable way that the organisation dealt with the media. These visits take a great deal of work, but in this case, the engagement and the resulting openness has been outstanding. The award winner is the University of Leicester. Tonight will be presented by Jeff Watts, who's the science journalist and broadcaster and chair of the Concordat Steering Group. He's a member of the Nuffield Council on Bioethics and he's involved in numerous committees that consider science and methodical ethics. He's also currently a member of our council. Please welcome Jeff Watts. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman, and uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a good few decades since I actually had an animal licence in any of this kind of work myself, but I did do it uh, in the past, a long time ago. 
And I've followed the, the changing fortunes or the, the, the public attitudes and the changes which they've gone through towards animal work with a great deal of fascination over the years. Sometimes, I may say, with, with horror. We seem to be in a, in a relatively pacific phase at the moment, and we can only hope that that does, that does last. Um, uh, as Jeremy said, uh, I chaired the steering group for the, the Concord Act, and so I had a vested interest in hoping it would succeed. And the, the feeling you have with an organisation uh, when you're putting together something like this is you think, well, let's hope enough people really take it seriously to just make it look respectable. Well, in fact, uh, it went far, far beyond that. And I was amazed not only by the, the enthusiasm with which organisations signed up, but the individuals within them, the, the, the diligence, the efforts they put into not just meeting the letter of the law when it came, the letter of the Concordat, when it came to uh, being ingenious uh, and, uh, and hardworking and trying to project openness, but also to, to go far beyond anything that might just have been doing what was, was necessary and no more. It, it, it's been really uh, a delight to see some of the things that have come up with, that uh, universities and other organisations have come up with during the, the course of the past couple of years. So. Um, the, the judges uh, decided, I'm, I wasn't one of the judges, so I'm but the, the vehicle for, for their opinions. They felt that there were three uh, particularly outstanding. And one of the, the three they described as representing a best practice example for the whole sector. So let's uh, so to begin, we have two highly commended awards and one winner. So let's begin with uh, the first of the highly commended awards. And the judges said that this website covered some tricky subject matter as it inherited a communication strategy from a time when primate researchers were subject to great hostility. Research on primates, they pointed out, is still among the most controversial areas of work, and the development of good and accessible public information about the primates used in the research is essential. The videos on the new website, this is one of the highly commended ones, the videos on the new website are excellent and communicate well. They emphasize welfare and explore the balance of harms and benefits effectively. And our first highly commended goes to the website of the MRC Center for Macaques. website category is doing well because, as I say, there are two highly commended. And the second one, the, the judges said, they described it as an excellent website which is engaging and easy to navigate. I thank God for that, I must say, by comparison with many. Uh, it contains lots of information about the three R's and they particularly liked the up-to-date case studies covering the breadth of research at the university concerned. And the university, and the second highly commended spot is University of Edinburgh. the tension becomes unbearable, the winner. <laughs> the uh, judges said that, in this case, they were impressed by a new website that pushed the boundaries of openness further. They found the information accessible and appropriate to a wide range of audiences with layers of material to engage people with different interests, and it was easy to navigate again. The material cover was extensive, of an excellent standard, while the question and answer sections and the infographic sections were particularly impressive. Ideally, they put a caveat in here. <laughs> Ideally, they say they would have preferred that it was more prominent in the overall university website, but felt that this was still a clear winner in the category. It's obviously not their choosing of whereabouts on the university site it is. So the university concerned is Manchester, University of Manchester. <laughs>
Okay, it's now time for UAR's award for an outstanding individual, and I'm going to present this. So, this last award is one that's been proposed by the UAR team. While the other awards were decided by a committee separate to UAR, as you've heard, even that committee was unanimous in agreeing that tonight's individual award should go to this recipient. There are few people in our sector who truly epitomise the spirit of openness about animal research, walking the walk as well as talking it as much as this person. He was encouraging journalists and others to come and see the reality of animal research years before the Concordat was even thought about. And even though he personally suffered at the hands of animal rights extremists, his conviction that openness and more communication are the only ways to tackle misunderstanding on this issue meant that he continued to champion the cause when others were too afraid to do so. He's been a long-standing supporter of UAR and its predecessor organisations, and I doubt there are many in this theatre who haven't benefited from his wisdom and generosity. So this year's individual award goes to Andy Gay. Thank you.